Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. When Order 66 arrived, it took away the last illusion that the clones had any sort of free will and liberty. It was discovered that biochips were implanted into the brains of the clones during the fetal stage of their development and were used to force compliance in the clones. These biochips forced the clone troopers to execute their Jedi commanders, even if it was against their will during Order 66. Not all Jedi had close relations to their clone troopers, but some treated their soldiers like they were family. For some clones, Order 66 was the last straw. This was a huge betrayal by the Republican Empire, a betrayal that they added onto a long list of grievances already perpetrated against them. And so it's not surprising that many clones wanted to leave the Grand Army of the Republic and later on the Galactic Empire. And so today, in order to help those individuals out, we've listed out five different ways a clone trooper can leave their service. When the Republic adopted the clone army, it was a unique moment in galactic history. This wasn't a slowly and carefully built up military force that took generations to create. Instead, it just appeared overnight. And so while the Grand Army of the Republic ran onto the battlefield of Geonosis, much of the logistical and bureaucratic apparatus is usually found in a military organization of this size were completely missing. The Battle of Geonosis was an extremely confusing ordeal. The Republic's battlefield tactics and coordination was all over the place, and it led to high casualties and a lot of mistakes. Entire units were wiped out and lost. There were tens of thousands of wounded and killed, and an equal amount of troopers who were missing in action. This confusion created plenty of opportunities for clones to kind of slip away unnoticed. Without a strong military police presence yet developed, the only people keeping you from going AWOL was your own unit. In Cut Coin's case, his entire unit was wiped out when his transport was shot down. His entire unit was actually declared lost in action, and Cut Quain ran away from the wreckage of his burning transport when the droids came and started executing anyone who was left alive. After spending some time free from military service, Cut Quain realized that he was a peaceful man and wanted no part in the killing. He would stay on the planet of Salakamai and start a new life with a pink twilight wife. This is pretty much a best case scenario for any clone trooper who wanted to leave. Another thing to notice here for any of you uh, clones who do want to escape the JAR, try to look for a Adoran planet that is sparsely populated like Salakamai. You're much less likely to find a Republic garrison on it. When Clone Trooper Tups and Fives died, their last words seemed to indicate that they were both relieved that their mission was finally over. By mission, what they probably meant were the reoccurring haunting nightmares they suffered through every night. This was most likely a side effect of the inhibitor chips placed in their brains. But perhaps what they really meant was that the only way a clone slave like them could escape from their servitude was through death. When Clone Commando 5 Skirata suffered a very nasty blow to the head, he was put into a medical coma and pronounced brain dead by Republic medical droids. Luckily for Five, the Skirata gang managed to get him out of the Republic military hospital and placed them in the Republic Central Med Center's neurology unit under a civilian name. What's great about the situation is in the Grand Army of the Republic's official records, Phi Skirata is actually labeled as KIA, which is great because if he does recover, which he does, no one will go looking for him, which is very important. Defection to the other side of the war was quite uncommon. This wasn't just because the Kaminoans' genetic alterations to the clones made them more loyal, it was also because the clones didn't have any family or friends outside of the JR. Essentially, they worked alongside their family members every day, and that made it very hard for a clone to betray the military. It's a unique side effect that really made the Grand Army of the Republic a very cohesive military force. But you did have disgruntled individuals like Sergeant Slick, who wanted more for himself and for the clones, and believed that the Jedi and the Republic had unfairly enslaved them. During the Battle of Christophus, Sergeant Slick would feed the Separatists information about Republic movements and even help sabotage a Republic airfield and ammo dump. In return, he would have a safe place in the Separatist Alliance along with a large amount of cash for him to build his new life with. Now, what Sergeant Slick does here is not highly recommended, not only because he betrayed his brothers, but also because the Republic will do everything in its power to capture an individual like Slick, as you'll find out in our next session. 
Some clones were less altered than the rank and file clones. You had individuals like the clone commandos, the null class arcs, and the alpha class arcs. These clones retained a lot of the independence of their genetic donor, Django Fett, and because of that, they are far less predictable on the battlefield and far more dangerous. These individuals usually liked fighting in small groups or by themselves. The clone commandos fought in pods of four, and the Null class and the Alpha class arc troopers were all lone wolves, mostly. Null arc troopers had an especially long leash given to them by Special Forces Command. They often went on missions disguised as civilians and had access to a large amount of credits, which could be used to acquire resources needed for a mission. These individuals are essentially given all the tools they really need to make a clean getaway from the Grand Army of the Republic. Noel Ark A-30, or Sol, had been assigned to the planet of Gaftikar, where he was engaged in a foreign internal defense mission to train the local Merit population into a rebel army that could fight against the Separatists. During his deployment there, he suddenly vanishes. Although we don't hear much about it nowadays, in Disney canon, the JR was obsessed with tracking down and eliminating known defectors of the Republic because they believed that their mentality could be contagious. And so, if a clone trooper goes AWOL and the Republic knows about it, be sure they're going to send out all of their resources to capture and then eventually kill this individual. In the case of a clone as dangerous as Sol, the clone commando, specifically Omega Squad, was sent to hunt him down. When Sol was later found by the clone commandos, he explained to them that he had uncovered a very dark plot in which the Republic would execute without trial any clone who defected or went AWOL. The GAR essentially sent out hit squads of covert op clones to take out any defectors. Covert op clone troopers were recruited from the rank and file clones. The GAR looked for individuals with less moral comms who were also very loyal to the cause. These individuals were ironically trained by the Null Arcs and basically assigned to do the JAR's dirty work. All of their missions are classified and kept from both public and military records. So basically, if you are going to try to leave the JAR, your best case scenario is that they think you're dead because then they won't send any covert op clone troopers after you. But there is one other hypothetical way a clone trooper could escape service, one that I think has the potential to work. If you take a look at the clone situation, objectively, this is enslavement. This goes directly against the Galactic Constitution, which states that all sentient beings should be protected from involuntary servitude. It's one of the most glaring hypocrisies of the Galactic Republic, and it's been kind of pushed aside because of the immediate threat that the Confederacy of Independent Systems poses. But as a clone, you have direct access to a Jedi commander, and certain Jedi would probably be willing to hear your case out. The Jedi are commanding officers and can shield the clone troopers from any kind of consequences for speaking out. Palpatine will probably try to send out some covert op clones to wipe out any dissenters, so this is an important part of the strategy. Now, the Jedi don't officially have that much political power, but their order has many connections within the Senate and are generally viewed by the populace in a very favorable light. If you can get the Jedi to champion reform in the Grand Army of the Republic, then it has a much bigger chance of succeeding. This actually seems like a no-brainer to me because the Jedi are kind of an irrational religious organization and... You know, in these kind of cases, you do need someone to be a little bit more irrational. Is it very dangerous to allow your clones to have freedom in the middle of a war? Probably yes, but is it the morally right thing to do? Of course. Well, guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about my list. Maybe I'm missing some other ways a clone can escape from the Grand Army of the Republic. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.